Hello everyone, today is April 12th, 2010, and I am back for another video. Now, today's video is going to be different and a little fun. I figured with all the emails that I get and all of them that I don't answer because I just, I'm horrible like that and I go to school full time and I take, you know, my work seriously and everything, but uh, today I'm going to go through my email, pick questions that I find interesting and that you guys might find interesting answer them. They might be personal questions. They might be questions that everyone can relate to. But nonetheless, let's get started. And our first question comes from FHSBULL Dogs 777. And he writes, I think it's fucking gay to be gay. Dude, you have a rude awakening when you die if you don't change your ways. Being a Christian, you supposedly once were, was not wrong, you had it right except for the being gay part. You probably were meant to be gay and go to hell, but God has still given you a choice. Maybe he's throwing people in front of you, like me right now, to tell you what you are doing is a sin. He doesn't hate you, you are a child of his, but I'm sure he doesn't want to lose you to some spirit of Satan in the end of your time. So think about it a little harder. That's all, John. Now I know that wasn't a question, but um, I, I just so happened to come across that email. And um, all I have to say to that is, I'm, I, if, if, if people like you are going to the heaven that I'm not going to, then that is great. I will spend all my time in the hell that I, I that I'll spend all the time in the hell that awaits me with all the people that I love in my life now that are coming to hell with me because my hell is gonna be a whole lot more fun than your fucking heaven with um, your little attitudes and beliefs on life. Okay. Okay. Now this is really a question. Question uh, number two is from two two G U A R D I, and his subject is what's your secret. He asks, why are a lot of gay people rich or come from a wealthy background? My gay friends come from some pretty wealthy backgrounds, but I wouldn't ask them about it because I don't want to hurt their feelings or have them basically kick my fucking ass. I feel comfortable asking you first because you live in Arizona and I'm all the way over here in Boston. Uh... And there's nothing you can do to me. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, I have never met one poor gay person ever in my life. Thanks for the question. Um, you know, this is kind of, kind of true, I guess, but kind of not true. There are gay people that live in every single country of this world. There are gay people that are poor. There are gay people that are rich. There are gay people that are, you know, not fashionable. There are gay people that live everywhere that are different types of everything and that is shown in almost every one of my videos uh, w you might see a lot of people that are gay or a lot of men that are gay um, more so than that are rich more so than that look poor because most gay men you know like to wear you know good clothes and they put themselves together and that is a stereotype that shows that they're gay um, so they might look like they have money because of the clothes that they wear um, also, they might appear that they're rich because of the few gay people that you know in Boston, but I know many people, including myself. I am poor. I have no money whatsoever, and I'm poor and I'm gay, so this is a fine example for you, know, for you uh, is right here. But, um, you know, I think it just comes with the, with, with the area that you live in, you know, but there are definitely poor people, there are definitely rich people, and maybe, just maybe, there are more gay people that are rich because we're just so goddamn fantastic and smart that most of us become very success, success, successful and rich in our lives because we know what's up. Yeah. Hello. Okay. My next question comes from uh, the Christ is the best. And I get like this type of question all the time. I may not answer all my emails, but I definitely read 99.9% .9 of them. And this is definitely one of the most common questions that I get from my viewers. Um, okay, he starts, because I struggle with my sexuality, I told most of my friends that I am gay, even my sister who was 12. Uh, I am 20. They are cool with it, especially my sister, but I still haven't told my Christian friends at church. I told one of my closest Christian friends, he is still my friend, but he is not okay with the whole idea. But I am scared that I'm going to hell when I die. 
Do you think that gays go to hell when we die? I absolutely 110% positive that gays do not go to hell when they die. I can make a 15 minute video about this, but let me just throw it out there. I am not atheist whatsoever, and I actually made a video about religion like a few videos ago. But to me, organized religion separates people and um, actually diminishes faith more than just being happy of who you are and whatnot. I believe in a God, and I believe that there is no heaven, there is no hell, and there's not one person to choose um, you, where you're going to go because of the lifestyle that you live. Um, I'm 100% sure that because you like men and like sleeping with men, you're not doomed to hell. And think of it this way, just like I was saying before. If you you are going to go to that hell think about all the people that are on this on this life you know who love gay men who are you know friends of family with people who are gay and um you know i'm going on a tangent here but organized religion to me was created for structure back in the bc eras to tell people what is good and what is bad and if you are going to hell because you're gay, I will be saving you a seat in the front row, brother. I will be saving you a seat. So don't be worried about going to hell. You ain't going to hell. You are going to go to the heaven with me and all the other people who love people for who they are and um, aren't judgmental against anybody. So that heaven that everyone else is going to, judging people, saying who you can't go with and what this and that, you have the choice, God has given you the choice. Well, I did ha I did not have a choice to be gay. I was born this way and I am gonna be going to the hell and everyone else that I love in this life is coming to the hell with me so I'm not gonna wanna go to, go to that heaven that you created anyway, okay? Okay, my next question comes from H-E-P-H a-E-S-T-U-S-O-S, -S -S, and her subject is crushes. She asks, I understand that a little crush here or there can be fine, but they've been a couple times when I'm a little worried about myself, what with thinking of my crush E too often and other things like that. So my question is, when is it going beyond a crush and becoming an unhealthy obsession? Um... Yeah, this is definitely a, a difficult question to answer considering I have n I know nothing about you and your intentions or uh, anything like that. But um, I have crushed before and I crush hard. I really do. And I crush hard because I know exactly what it is I'm looking for and I rarely find it. But when I do, I, I it's so hard for me not to think of the person, not to think of me and that person together. Um, and, you know, I crush hard. I am definitely one of those romantic love, you know, want to find my long last love and, and all that. So I definitely know where you're coming from, which is why I chose this question. I think a lot of people, you know, um, can relate to this question too, but that is, that's the beauty of crushes. Like not to be obsessive and follow the person and like go in front of their house and look in their windows and stuff. But a crush is just that you don't know too much about that person. They don't know too much about you. And like you think of them, they probably think of you. And that's where relationships like blossom is with the crush. So to answer your question, I don't think you can become too obsessive unless you become a creep. But um, that's the beauty of it. That's like the, you don't know if they like you yet. You don't know how they react to certain situations. Do you call them? Do you text them? But you do know there's something there. You do kind of like them. You don't know if that like is going to turn to something else. So to answer your questions, be natural with your crushes. Um, definitely make your decisions from your heart and not so much your head. And enjoy it. Crushes are such a beautiful thing. And uh, I love them. So... That's my answer to your question. Okay, I have a few questions from Ben O L S E N, and he asks: First question: How did you get started with your vlogging slash blogging? I got started vlogging when I was 18 years old, and I started doing it on YouTube on a different channel. I think it was called Let Me Be Just Me. A couple of you have watched those videos. I completely deleted all the videos. And it was me with my camera. I used to edit and make funny videos and like things like that. Um, I very rarely talked about myself. No one knew I was gay or anything like that. And it was very kind of private without my personal life, but it was very funny. And I did skits and stuff with my family and my brothers and sisters and stuff. Um, so that's where it all started. But honestly, I started vlogging straight up on YouTube on this channel. My first like real vlog is the first video that is still up here. And that's the cool thing about my channel is that, you know, I'm almost, you know, 8,000, 9,000 subscribers now. And every single video I've ever made is still there except for like two. 
Um, so I started vlogging on this channel with my first video being my first video. So you can definitely see that vlogging is an art. It definitely is um, a learned process of how to talk and how to communicate and how to really look at this camera and think you're talking to people and not just some crazy person you know, in your room talking to yourself. Um, so check it out, like check my first video, my second video, my 10th video, my 15th video, and you can see my communication through my vlogs actually become, I think, more effective over time. His second question is, he or she's second question is, why do you vlog? I love this question and no one has ever asked me this question before and I think it's such a great question. Why do I vlog? I vlog for two main reasons. The first reason why I vlog is because I think that this is one of the best best ideas, whatever you want to call it, to do. Not only do I get to share my ideas with other people, whoever wants to view it and decide to view it with hundreds of thousands of people around the world potentially, but I get to, in 10 years, 15 years time, have my own personal journal, diary, whatever you want to call it, of how my perceptions were and how I thought my reality was at one time. Because your perception changes over time and so does your reality. But I have all mine recorded on a server on this website for not only my liking and my viewing 15 years from now, but for my children's, for my potential husband's, for all you guys to share. And I'm not a shy person, I don't care who looks at my videos, um, it's out there for everyone obviously. So that's one of the reasons, is for like a personal diary for myself in 15, 20, 30, 40 years time. And the second reason is I I know how, how, how life is, I know how you can get stuck in a rut and uh, especially with, with my sexuality and everything like that and I just felt like there was something that I, I could have to help other people with my insights, my perceptions, and um, not say I'm some kind of god and I'm here to save you guys, but at the same time, I feel like with my communication skills and with the love and in my life and how blessed I am to have what I have in my life, I feel like there's a lot that I, I know and can share and help other people. So with those three reasons, that is why I vlog, and I get a lot of criticism, criticism about it, but I love doing it, and I ain't going nowhere anytime soon, okay? Do my friends and family know that I vlog slash blog? So out of everyone I know in my life, everybody, all my friends, people I work with, everything and all that, the only people know that I vlog is my parents and my brother and probably about two friends. So to answer your question, no, my friends, coworkers, nobody know that I vlog or blog. And the reason for this is because I feel like if they knew that I had a vlog or blog, I would be more inclined to, you know, worry about what I'm going to say and make sure that I'm not going to be criticized in this kind of way. I just feel more free to say and express my feelings, emotions, and ideas when people in my own life aren't going to, um, you know, hear it or criticize it. Not to say that I'm two different people. If, if my friends did see my vlog, they'd be like, well, yeah, that's him. This is who I am. But I just feel more freedom knowing that I'm talking to people that I don't really know and this is just like me and la 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 la. So to answer your question, nobody knows about my blog except for about three people that I know personally. So, yeah. The last question from Ben W double O L S E N is, uh, do you like the idea of posting your own personal problems in your videos? Uh, yes, of course. And not only do I like or enjoy posting my problems, emotions, feelings through my videos, but I promote it as well. Uh, being, you know, studying the media and learning about the, how the media affects people, people like to see people react in real situations with their feelings and emotions and their problems. Uh, it's one of the reasons why reality television is doing so well. So if you are okay with being that vulnerable and sharing your inner thoughts and feelings uh, with the world, then I totally, totally think that's a great idea because not only are you going to learn so much about yourself sitting here and expressing how you, how you feel and how you think, it's almost like therapy, honestly, but you're, you're able to share your thoughts and feelings with other people and who knows, who, who's to say that other people aren't going to learn from your own mistakes, from your own problems, from your own situations. Because nine to one, through the emails that I get, people learn and people appreciate your own problems and how you how you figure them out and how real you are with yourself and and and, and everything um, all together. So if you are okay, because it's hard to be vulnerable and it's hard to be real and and to express your problems through vlogging to, to other people. But if you are okay with that and you're in that mental state to do so, and you're strong enough to do so. 
totally do it. It is so healthy and you get to help other people. And uh, so to answer your question, not only do I think it's okay, but I promote doing that. And people do appreciate it in the long run. So that is my fun, loving, uh, me showing you that I do read my emails. I do uh, appreciate the questions and uh, I don't always respond, but I always read them. And so uh, I hope this video was fun for you all. I will be back uh, shorter than later and with another video. I hope you all are enjoying uh, 2010 and your spring, and uh, I will see you shortly with another video. Mwah.